welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 102nd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we are going to talk about beauty. And it all began with my reading of Garant Story's book, Love, Style, and Life. If you haven't had a chance to read this book by the illustrator, author, blogger, street style photographer, Garant Story, you will want to pick it up. I really did whip through this book. As soon as it arrived on Tuesday, I think I had it done in two days. And those are two work days, which is saying a lot because usually I go to bed, I'm so exhausted, I can maybe read for 15 minutes and then I'm out. But she writes with such a passion and and balances confidence with self-deprecation so well. She just seems very comfortable with her life. And that is what drew me in. She is truly passionate about her life. And this is a woman who has created a living on something that is aesthetically pleasing to our eye. But this is the thing. It initially catches our eye, her illustrations, her her blog, her f- photography, but then she offers substance. And this book is full of an introduction to who she is and how she became the person she is showing us today. And while it's inspiring, it's also a reminder that we all have our own path and we really need to trust it. One of the quotes that she shared is what inspired today's episode. Let's talk about beauty. And I'm going to get into that here in just a second. But before I do, let me tell you a little bit about this week's Petit Plaisir. It is something for your home that will add a little something extra to complete the mood or the ambiance that you're trying to cultivate, maybe at the end of the day, maybe in the weekend. I am thoroughly enjoying it, and I think you will too. So stay tuned at the end of today's episode, and I'll share everything there is to know about this petit plaisir. All right, back to today's episode. So I wanted to start with a quote from Grand Story's book, Love, Style, and Life. Here we go. I have also realized that looks have absolutely no correlation to the quality and the beauty of the life you create. That is, in essence, what we're going to talk about when we talk about beauty today. This idea that there's so much more behind what society defines as beautiful. But it was another quote that gave me pause that really started the conversation in my head. So what exactly does it mean, especially since I'm someone, as I think many of you guys are too, who appreciates beauty in our life? How, how do we rectify that, those two, of the outer beauty, the appreciation for beauty, and then what is true beauty? So let me share with you another quote. The danger is that if we make beauty the focus of our lives, we attract people who do the same. Now, taken out of context, the quote can be interpreted many different ways, but for the sake of understanding her intent, she is speaking to physical beauty, the symmetry that few of us are born with, the genes that we can only possess as haphazardly as winning the lottery. The construct of beauty, I have come to understand depends upon how and with whom we are raised and can either serve as a builder or a deflator. Now, let me explain the difference between those two. If we grow up in a family and a community that praises us for something we have no control over as we are young, unlearned, trusting, and naive, we instinctively do more of what is praised, similar to training a pup, spending more money on makeup, clothing, seeking attention solely for how we look. After all, what would be the motivation for a young person to do something in which we would be given no support 
diving into our studies, for example, or exploring our curiosities, if we haven't developed a muscle to see the beauty in such pursuits, no one applauds us for that. We, again, are really young at this age, right? The lower we are on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the more likely we are to continue doing what is certain, what is safe, what is earning us an applause or attention. But if we grow up in an environment that encourages the growth towards self-actualization, while acknowledging the power of presentation, yes, it's there, it's a reality, but making sure that our focus is on development, growth, and finding a peace to not only trust ourselves and grow intellectually, but also to cultivate a life where we are giving ourselves the tools to be able to attain self-confidence on our own, we then no longer need approval from the outside world. And that is when we give beauty the power of being a builder in our lives because we possess the beauty and that beauty is more than skin deep. But if we base our life on only seeking approval based on our looks, we give everyone else the power. We take it away from ourselves and we give beauty the ability to deflate us. So that's the difference with regards to those two constructs of beauty, giving it the power to either be a builder or a deflator. If we are fortunate enough to have experienced the latter childhood where we are encouraging growth and on a path towards self-actualization, we see that beauty is more than skin deep. We see beauty as something that is found in actions, behavior, and confidence We see beauty as something that increases as we age rather than dissipates as we grow wiser and more bon dans ses peu, or well within our skin. The fact that must be acknowledged is that there is a reason we as humans are drawn to what aesthetically pleases us. That's not an accident. Don't berate yourself for being drawn to things that are beautiful. Virginia Postrel includes in her essay, The Truth About Beauty, that the reality is we as beings seek unconsciously or maybe consciously for some partners who are healthy and thus would appear to be more fertile. Men seek out more feminine features as it signals higher levels of feminine hormones and vice versa for women seeking men. But while this is science, we also know that we live in a postmodern world. We seek more from our partners than just their genetic makeup. We seek thoughtful, worthwhile companionship. And such companionship cannot be conveyed solely in a woman's doe-like eyes or a man's six-pack abs. We must dig deeper. I'd like to start with an analogy to, to further explain where true beauty resides. All right, here we go. The depth of a tree's roots determine its true strength and ability to stand strong in times of extreme turbulence. With that said, the depth of a tree's roots are not something we can see on the surface. We cannot know if the roots have been forced to remain close to the surface, thus not preventing it from withstanding a flood of water. Contrarily, we cannot know if the depths of the tree's roots wind down deep beyond what we could possibly fathom, but can then only appreciate after a severe blustery day and then seeing the tree still standing. The self-assuredness, the self-confidence we have cannot be founded upon what we present physically to the world alone. Because if we do, if all we do is invest in our skincare, invest in our wardrobe, invest in our exterior presentation to gain approval, compliments, and attention, but can offer nothing else, the perpetual chase of what is deemed beautiful will forever have us chasing our tails and never leave us content. And that's the goal, right? We want to be content. We want to know the formula in many ways of how individually we can come to that true contentment. In other words, if we only pursue superficial beauty, we will forever be insecure. Now, being insecure can happen for other reasons as well, but the common ingredient for eradicating insecurity is to establish deep roots within yourself. I have a quote from Diane von Furstenberg as she speaks to this idea of insecurity. Here she goes. The greatest natural enemy of women is insecurity. We all feel it and we all think we are the only ones who feel that way. How we deal with these fears determines to a great extent how effective we are in running our lives. 
Most women present a facade to the world and keep the insecurity locked inside. The toughest job in the world is to be a complete happy woman. How then do we deal with fears and insecurity? If we all initially will have them, how can we deal with them? What exactly does building deep roots mean? With regards to the topic of beauty, it means shifting the definition and the conversation. Women, as we know, but it bears repeating, women are not a piece of art to gawk at. If we happen to look stunning in the attire we have chosen, it is a decision for self-expression. It is a decision exuding our self-respect. It is a decision to engage people in further investigation and to get to know the intriguing woman wearing the clothes. It is not the end of the conversation, but rather the introduction. The difficult part of shifting the discussion is the shifting of the discussion we have in our own minds unconsciously. We must not feel defeated when a crop of zits pops up up out of nowhere. Swap out zits for a wrinkle or two or three. Swap it out for anything that is on the surface of who we are that we either cannot control or something that is temporary. We are more than a temporary bacterial flare-up. We are more than wrinkle lines. Our words, our actions, our ease in loving the life we've created for ourselves, that is what people notice and remember. And for those people who are drawn to us for our words, actions, and approach to life, those are the people we want to surround ourselves with. Dressing well, having fun with fashion, being enamored with our home's decor, these are absolutely passions of many of you as well as myself. Don't apologize for that. We cannot ignore that we appreciate beauty. That is something that's leading us somewhere. That is something that is actually a compass in many ways. But this is, the, this is the key thing to understand, and I know many of you know this, but this is maybe what we can explain to those who say, but wait a second, you like to wear nice clothes, and you like to da 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 Here's what you say in return. There is, and indeed, a power that comes with creating a space that is inviting and an outfit that makes us feel our best. But each of these passions create the backdrop for us the individual, the woman who now has, after countless hours, months, and years of investment, cultivated deep, strong roots. It allows her to shine. The outfit, the nice decor, your outer beauty is just a backdrop. You are the star. You are the person up front that is now engaged with those people that were drawn to it or those people that now feel comfortable or welcomed in your home who feel that you want them there because you've taken the time to invest in a home that you love and call home or with a relationship to invest in someone who cares enough about themselves to take care of themselves because the exterior of who you are is merely an introduction to who you are entirely. Here's a brief list of what true beauty is. Knowing your worth. Sincerity. Kindness to all, even if we have to tactfully share a truth that hurts. Strength found within. Embracing a life that does not follow, but rather adheres to what is calling you. Expressing love without expectation. A life of gratitude. Knowing life is always offering a chance to evolve. Acceptance of others. Self-respect without needing approval. Self-confidence. And last but not least, being who you were meant to be. I want to share one last quote from Grand Story as it speaks to that last point of what true beauty is. Quote, Because the thing is, Whatever is given to you on the day you are born, you are the one who decides who you will become every day. Beauty grows as we grow into ourselves. End quote. I encourage you to grow into who you can become, not what you think you should become. Enjoy the journey of discovery. It's exciting. There's a little bit of you know, uncertainty involved, obviously, but it's also exciting because there is uncertainty there. Revel in the unknown as you strive towards what is tickling your curiosities. 
Beauty is in many ways passion set on fire, and sometimes it may also need to include a pair of blinders to ignore the perplexed and the cynics. When you are completely lost in the living of the life that you love, when you only have the wherewithal to appreciate the amazing things around you and applaud those who are engrossed in their own life's passions as well, that is when your true beauty is alive and radiating to those all around you. And that, that is attention getting. That is far more electric than a pretty perfect painting that will be looked at once and then passed by or sold at auction to hang stagnant on another wall. Most importantly, when you are exuding true beauty, the attention of the outer world, what it pays you is irrelevant because your roots are deep. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode about beauty and what true beauty really is and how we can find it, how we can cultivate it. Even if we didn't have that ideal childhood that helped us, you know, focus on our deeper selves, we can do that now. We can absolutely do that now and begin cultivating that. And I'll share a few links that will address topics that we mentioned. For example, self-actualization and self-confidence. So be sure to stop by the show notes, which the show notes are located at the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 102. But now let's get to this week's Petit Plaisir. I'll see you in just a few. All right. Welcome back. This week's Petit Plaisir is a candle. And I have shared a couple of different candles on the blog and on this podcast. I'm always looking for a candle, first of all, that has a lovely scent that's not too overpowering, but is lasting. And also for a candle that lasts. What I mean by that has a lot, a long life span. It doesn't burn out quickly. Um, so I'm willing to invest. And what I found is we do have to invest in candles if we want that scent to last and for the, the actual candle itself to be around for more than just a week or two. And this particular candle is not only a fantastic addition to your home, but is a fantastic gift as well because the packaging and the quality of the product. Now, I'm not a big person for labels um, with regards to, for example, Diptych has the little label that's absolutely recognizable on one of the sides, as um, are a handful of other candles I've talked about. Well, I like the, can- the, the labels. The labels are simple. They're nice. This particular candle does not have a big glaring label, and I do appreciate that about this brand. Okay, we may be wondering, what the heck am I talking about? I'm talking about Aaron. Aaron's home and entertaining line is offering a handful of different candles that are quite large that are to burn for 60 hours or more. And while the price is about $70 to $80, it is definitely something that you're going to have for a while. It's not going to burn out as quickly as a diptych. This is a lot larger than a diptych, which you pay $60 for. So you're getting a lot more money, a lot more product for your buck. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking for a gift for housewarming, this would be a lovely gift for housewarming. I know it's, um, if you have a good friend that has a birthday coming up, for those of you that live in France for Mother's Day, as it's coming up at the end of May, 1st of June, this would be a great gift as well. But you can also get it for yourself, which is what I did. I have been enjoying their Buckhorn Amber Candle. And for me, the scent that I love is a more musky, woodsy scent with a little bit of sandalwood. And that is exactly what this one offers. It has a little bit of floral, but not too much. And it's just so subtle. But immediately you smell it and it stays in the room well after you have blown out the candle. The packaging of the candle itself, it's an off-white cylinder candle with a gold bottom Or if you take off the bottom, you can put it on the top so that it doesn't collect any dust if you don't light your candle that often. In other words, it is a fantastic quality home decor item. I highly recommend. Mine has been burning each evening in my living room for the past six days, and I think you will be pleased as well. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or something for the home. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Have a wonderful week, everyone. 
and I'll be back next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcast, blog posts, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.